Oh yes, Steeler football is back tonight. Uh, here we go, guys. This is the start of Stairway to Seven Part Two, and uh, it's Monday. The Steelers play tonight on Monday Night Football. They play the New York Giants, and you know, like I said last week, this has obviously been a very weird off season with the coronavirus, social injustice becoming a factor in sports more and more, and the fact that. You didn't have, the NFL had no preseason games. They had to change their training camps and everything around to make sure that people, the athletes, don't get sick, don't get the coronavirus and all that. And it just makes for a very interesting season all around. Like we don't really know what's going to happen with this team. Go with with this team, we've already seen other teams kind of been affected by the by the fact that. The fact that we've had this crazy year, like you've had the, like you've had teams start off slow and then become their usual selves as they go on and on. Some teams have actually been fine. Like the Green Bay Packers yesterday were did pretty well, despite the fact that they didn't have any preseason or anything, is or they didn't really get any help for Aaron Rodgers. But Aaron Rodgers did what Aaron Rodgers does best. He threw four touchdowns. I mean, Seattle was very good yesterday. So was Buffalo. Uh, the Patriots look like they have a good start with Cam Newton. Um, Browns are still the Browns. Uh, Ravens, they're still looking like the team that could beat the uh, Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC race. And uh, probably the biggest surprises of yesterday were the fact that Jacksonville found a way to win, Indianapolis found a way to win, found a way to lose that game. Uh, Philadelphia lost to the Washington football team, which was a big surprise. Uh, and Tom Brady without. Bruce, Bill Belichick really didn't. It really didn't look like himself. Like he really, like when you watch that game against him against the Saints, it looked like he was off. But at the same time, you got to remember that this team hasn't. Re is that there's been no preseason for him to really get settled into this. So, I think whatever happens in Week One, I don't think we should really consider this to th what this should be like for the rest of the season. But it just seems weird, and that's why going into tonight against the New York Giants. The New York Giants don't really ha don't really have much much on offense that could really that could really pu push this push that team around. Like Saqu like the biggest th name on that t offense is Saquon Barkley who had an off season last year after having a great t rookie season. I mean, I expect him to bounce back big time this season, but they still haven't found that guy who could replace Odell Beckham Jr. Like when they traded him, they still haven't found that guy who could take the, the that kind of towel that Odell had when he was there. And I mean, Golden Tate's the closest guy they have, but the biggest question on the New York Giants tonight is Daniel Jones. Can he really step up now that he's the main man there? And chances are he could. But I think tonight they're going to start struggle a little bit. I think the Steelers will struggle a little bit early on too. Because keep in mind, this is the first game without this is the first game Ben Roethlisberger's returned to since the. He got injured almost a year ago against the Seahawks. So I expect him to start sluggish at first, and then hopefully as the game goes on, he gets back to his to his former self. Uh, there's people on that team that need to rebound after having a sluggish year last year. James Conner, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. But there are rising stars there. Deontay Johnson, James Washington. I'm curious if we'll see Chase Claypool tonight. Uh, but uh, probably the best thing going for the Steelers is that the defense will be ready to go because most of the defense is still there. Uh, since the last time I I talked to you guys on this, uh, Bud Dupree, not Bud, not Bud Dupree, um, Cam Haywood signed a big contract to stay with the team. T.J. Watt expected to have a big game tonight. Mika Fitzpatrick, he said this is his first training camp fully with the Steelers, so there are a lot of things to get excited about this defense for, and I think they can be a strong threat in the AFC, especially in the AFC North. But they're going to have to find a way to get to the Ravens. If the Ravens are as good as they were on yesterday, as they were last year, that's, they're going to be tough to beat. But then again, it's the Browns, but what do you expect from them? But uh, In terms of my predictions tonight, I think the Steelers will easily beat the New York Giants. I think it, I think it should be an easy game, but with this heat with this team and the way that they kind of keep the score going what am I trying to say here trying to keep the score close I think it'll be a little I think it'll be the lead won't be as big as most people are expected to be I think the Giants will will score some touchdowns I think they'll get close enough to where 
you might think for a minute, okay, are they going to pull this off? But I think the Steelers do win this game tonight. I think that is I think they do win. I think Ben Roethlisberger has a pretty good game back. I'm not expecting him to have blockbuster numbers. Like I said, I expect him to struggle at first, but hopefully as the game goes on, he gets b back to his old routine. But we'll see what happens. But yeah, like I said, the Steelers, I think, will win this game against the Giants. I don't think the Giants are going to be a bad team this year. I just don't think they have enough firepower to get them to that top tier of that division, the NFC North. But let's be honest, the NFC North's not looking too, good, not looking that good either. I mean, Dallas yesterday struggled. Philadelphia struggled. The best team right as of the time I'm recording this is the Washington football team. Who expected that to happen? But, um, but um, yeah, it's that division's going to be very tough, for, largely because no team has really set themselves up as a contender, unlike the AFC North, where the Ravens, after what they did yesterday, clearly are setting themselves up to be the top contender in that team, and that's the th team that the Steelers are going to really have to work hard to find a way to win against when they have, when they play them next month. So, but for right now, yeah, like I said, the Steelers, I think, will win this game. I think they'll go to 1-0. It'll be their, I, th I predict it'll be their first home, not first home win, first season opener win since 2017 when they beat the Browns because they've lost they tied in 2018 against the Browns and then 2019 they lost to the Patriots in embarrassing fashion but yeah I'm gonna say the Steelers win this game and hopefully that happens let's see how but let's see how much the fact that there's been no preseason and they've had to change everything around let's see how much that changes that, that affects them in the first start of this game of the season Win. 
coming up in you, Rich. I'm going 11 and 5 Steelers. I don't think, you know, you expect looking at the schedule that they'll get out to a very good start, but Steelers' track record is slow to stumbling at the start, but they do pick it up and finish strong at the end. I think Jerry Dulac agrees with you, Charlie. Uh, same kind of record. I think this is a playoff team, no doubt. I'll say 12 and 4, and I say that because I think their experience, they have just about everyone back. If they stay away from injury and don't turn them over the football, I think you're looking at a team that could win the DAFC North. Seven, 67 yards and a touchdown. And don't forget that 11-yard scramble. All right, so at the half, 16-10 to 10 Steelers lead. Like I said before, I knew there was going to be a little bit of a sluggish start on both sides of the field, but the Giants seemed to get momentum first, but then Ben Roethlisberger comes back with not one but two touchdowns, the second one coming in the last seven seconds, and they get the ball to start the second half. So right now, things are looking pretty good. Let's see what happens. Let's hope they can continue to hold on to this lead. That's one of the things that really that really has me kind of worried because last year they didn't hold the lead very well going into the second half but like I said they get the ball to start the second half so hopefully they can keep this momentum going a couple years ago they're one two and one kind of dug themselves a hole they well I think Juju Smith-Schuster said it best at the end of the game that's our quarterback I mean Ben Roethlisberger welcome back man we missed you Three touchdowns, two of them to Juju, one of them to... Now I'm completely blanking on who scored the, front, who scored the second touchdown. James Washington. <laughs> I just saw the game. How can I forget that? But, um, but yeah, this is what I was expecting. I expected the Steelers to start off slow, obviously, because they hadn't been playing together in a preseason game because all the preseason games got canceled. They did start off slow. The Giants took advantage of that early on. But then right at, the, right at the near the halfway point of the second quarter, the Steelers just took over the game. There was a point during the third, court, third quarter where Daniel Jones and the Giants were just holding on to the ball like crazy. They had like a near nine-minute drive that could have easily been a touchdown. But then Daniel Jones gets pressured by Bud Dupree and then throws it up in the air. And Cam Haywood gets, it, gets the interception in the end zone. That was the, really the point where the Steelers just had the game. There was that point where Benny Snell... Drop the drop the football on the ground, but Juju Smith-Schuster was smart enough to get the ball back, and I was surprised that he got the ball back because I look like anytime that happens, especially with the Steelers the last season, usually it goes to the other team. But Juju was smart enough to get the ball, get back on the ball, and get back on top of it, and that drive continued. And so, yeah, kudos to the Steelers. Um, some injury news: there was some big injuries. Uh, James Conner didn't finish the game; he only had six. Uh, six carries for nine yards, which is unfortunate. I think they just dropped him. Because, I think they just held him off because Benny Snell was doing a much better job holding the ball and getting yardage. But, you know, I'm pulling for James Conner. I'm pulling for James Conner because he he deserves to have a, 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 repro, a return to his 2018 glory. Like, he's had trouble staying healthy, and hopefully it's nothing too serious. I hope he still gets a chance down the line to make some big, pl make some big plays. But the two biggest injuries, of course, are Stephen Wisniewski and especially Zach Banner on the last touchdown. Uh, so far, nothing has been confirmed yet, but Zach Banner's injury looked pretty serious, as did Wisniewski. So hopefully, hopefully nothing bad happened. You saw Zach Banner tearing up like it was a serious injury. So hopefully, hopefully it's nothing too serious, although it probably is. But again, we'll see what happens, but... Yeah, overall, the Steelers did pretty well tonight. They exercised a lot of demons from the last two seasons, missing the playoffs and not getting out to the big start that they should have. And they just came together and put it up, put it all together in the end. So, yeah, 26-16 to was the victory. And now we wait until Sunday afternoon when they take on the Denver Broncos at Heinz Field. So, we are off and running on the 2020 season. Let the, let the stairway to seven continue.